Welcome to Life Esteem, a program committed to delivering information that's important to you and your community. Hello and welcome again to Life Esteem. Always great to have you as a viewer. I always say it and I always mean it, right? Okay. And today we're going to talk about the Writer's Workshop. I'm so glad to have the president of the board, uh, Brother Jason Moffat, on. How you doing, man? I'm doing okay. great. All right. Good to be here. Jason is an excellent poet and writer and has been with the Writer's Workshop now for, man, how long? Uh, since 96. Is so, it really? Yes. Okay. Yes. Wow. wow. 22 yeah, years. 22 years. Yeah. Long time. 22 years. Yeah. Look, Long time. The workshop itself has been around since 77. Mm -hmm. That's 41 years. Long man, time. oh man. Wow. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, so tell us all about the Rise Workshop. Recently we had a chance to meet with uh, Dana Payne. Yes. And uh, talk about some things. But, hmm. So the Writer's Workshop, to me, in my words, is a space for writers to come to share their voice, uh, to explore their voices, and to grow as writers. Mm -hmm. um, an open forum for the public, a, I think a value uh, for young writers and old writers mm -hmm. to really share and commune with other writers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, it's been a personal space that really helped me find my voice and grow as a writer. Mm -hmm. um, there was a quote I read once that said, writing is an exploration that you start with nothing and mm -hmm. learn as you go. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what the Writer's Workshop exemplifies. Mm -hmm. uh, we all come in and we may not exactly know where we're going mm -hmm. on um, our exploration, but we learn together. I like as that. writers. I like that a I lot. Like that, yeah. yeah, yeah, like keep quote. that quote in mind. Man. <laughs> Let me know who wrote that because I like that quote. But uh, yeah, and so, and you know, we've always had that Friday night forum. And, uh, you know, and I'll shamelessly say that, um, you know, the official title, of course, is Nathaniel Gaston's Writer's Workshop, blah, blah, blah. And uh, there's actually some other writer's workshops around. I was shocked to find that out when we went to, you know, do the fictitious search. And so that's why we call it Nathaniel Gaston's Writer's Workshop, because I founded it and this and that. But the truth of the matter is it's just been a, a family affair with a lot of people for a lot of years right. mm -hmm. that, you know, so talk a little bit about uh, that in terms of, you know, the mechanisms of Friday nights and some of the other things we've been able to do. Sure. The Writers' Workshop, initially, I mean, we've had many homes. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember when we were on Forster Street, when mm -hmm. Jump Street was there. I can't remember the name of the building. Uh, from there, we moved to the Whitaker Center, mm -hmm. uh, the grand opening. I remember the celebration and us being a part of the opening of the Whitaker Center. Mm -hmm. uh, we moved to your building, the, the church, at one point. Mm -hmm. So we've moved around, but... The concept of the Writer's Workshop has never changed, mm -hmm. so it's always been that open forum on Friday nights for mm -hmm. uh, poets, writers to come in and, ex and ex share and express their, their words and share with the public. Mm -hmm. uh, on Friday nights, we meet the first, second, and fourth Fridays of the month mm -hmm. uh, at the Midtown Scholar Bookstore currently. Um, and again, it's an open forum, but what we're looking to do now is to shift mm -hmm. uh, to where we have more featured readers. So we're giving local writers the opportunity to feature their voices right. mm -hmm. um, accompanied by our opening, open reading. So the open reading is a staple of the Writer's mm -hmm. Workshop too. So people that come in have an opportunity to share their voice each and every Friday that they're there. Yeah, yeah, no question mm -hmm. about it. And one thing uh, I will mention also that uh, we were at the Neighborhood Center for a number of yeah. years as well. Yes. That was yeah. a great space as well as uh, the um, Kemp Curtin YMCA has been a great space yeah. for us and it goes on down the line. I don't want to miss any, but uh, you're right. We've moved around, you know, Allison Hill Community Center one time, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, but the concept has always stayed the same and it's always been a community forum. Uh, you're an author yourself. Tell us about your book, The Splash Pattern uh, on the <laughs> Glass. It seems like such a long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I published a book called Splash, Splash Patterns on the Glass, a collection of my poetry, uh, really based on... Uh, it was born in the Writer's Workshop, actually. I mean, there were a few pieces in the book that were written prior to that, mm -hmm. but it was really a part of my growth as a writer mm -hmm. by coming to the Writer's Workshop on Friday nights, listening to other voices, and developing my own mm -hmm. uh, unique voice. Yeah. Uh, so it's been, it was published in 2006. That's a long, it seemed like a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe it's not a long time ago, but. I'm uh, shocked when you said that 2006. Yeah, 2006. It's been, it's yeah. been quite a while. Yeah, it's yeah. been quite a while. But yeah. I, I wouldn't have been able to bring that book to the world without mm -hmm. the help of the Writer's Workshop. That's really where I kind of cut my teeth mm -hmm. as a writer and learned um, not only the art of poetry but also how to um, 
how to really hone the craft mm -hmm. um, and, and create my writing in my own voice, but something that uh, still was true to poetry. Mm -hmm. Well, talking about that, when you first started at the workshop, when did you start writing poetry? How old were you when you really started? <laughs> it's fun about my own poetry, probably, yeah. um, that I remember is right. high school, but I remember when I was in elementary school when mm -hmm. we started reading poetry and I liked the rhyme, yeah. so I used to copy other poems and I would take them home and give them to mm -hmm. my mom, like, hey, I wrote this for you. And like, <laughs> and I didn't really write it. Yeah. But the first thing I really remember where I started to write was high school. I had an English teacher, mm -hmm. uh, my English lit teacher, Paul Lavelle, in my senior year, mm -hmm. uh, really kind of sparked my, my writing. I'd written something earlier uh, in another class, we had a, a, an assignment to write a eulogy, and I mm. wrote it as a poem. Mm. Um, so, and that was probably 11th grade. But my 12th grade year really sparked. I started to write a lot more and recognize mm. that I could write. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, let me ask you, during your time, but I also know you were in the military, in the Marines, is that yes, correct? Yes, correct. Were you writing poetry during that time at all? I was, <laughs> I was writing poetry when I was in the Marines. So, uh, uh, the, the end of my service in the Marines, I was stationed at a place called Cherry Point, mm. and I worked in a security detail. So, when I was on post, a lot of times <laughs> I would be writing poems when there was mm -hmm. nothing happening. Uh -huh. you know? So it was, a, it was a military installation, but they were all civilian workers. So mm -hmm. once they were in, people checked in, I had some downtime. Mm -hmm. So I would either read or I would write. Oh, Fantastic. Okay. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never forget Jason coming in. Uh, the first time you kind of just, you know, came in and you said it was 96. Man, I'll tell you. Yeah, <laughs> time flies. And, but uh, it's interesting because you were so typical of so many others. They come in to kind of quiet at first. You know, didn't, didn't really say much, and then he kind of just started flowing, and everybody's like, "Wow!" And Jason's written at least two or three, I think, classics. We see at the writers' workshop. <laughs> uh, you know, suburban ghetto blues, mm -hmm. uh, America. Uh, is it just America? Or America. America. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of, but anyhow, yeah, just great stuff, man. You know, who are some of the people that you remember over the years? Uh, when I think back to the workshop, I think of Dorothy King, for example, when right. she first came in from New York. You know, mm -hmm. and how she made the splash and had some great ideas. Of course, she's now down, or unless she retired, at uh, Penn State uh, Harrisburg. Harrisburg. Yeah, mm -hmm. Harrisburg campus. Uh, but she's like a breath of fresh air. Right. Mm -hmm. Before I mention some of those folks, I mm -hmm. do want to mention that mm -hmm. you talked about when I first arrived at the workshop. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'll never forget, you said to me that it sounded like I was apologizing mm -hmm. when I was reading. Oh, okay. But you encouraged me. Mm -hmm not to do that. You encourage me to find my voice, mm -hmm. to keep writing, and not to apologize for my words. Yeah. And I think that that's part of the growth mm -hmm. that's important, mm -hmm. that people can understand that when you mm -hmm. come, it's an environment where people are going to nurture you, accept you, right. accept your voice, and help you to mm -hmm. grow if that's what you're looking for. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I appreciate and, you saying that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And mm -hmm. part of that growth comes from people like Claude Lewis. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember having a conversation with Claude one time, and he said, poetry is the art of saying exactly what you want to say mm -hmm. in as few words as possible. Mm -hmm. So, and that stuck with me. So how can I be judicious mm -hmm. with my words? Mm -hmm. How can I, mm -hmm. I take the value of each word that I'm putting on the page and and ensure mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm being true to that value. So yeah. Claude was a big influence. Uh, Richard James. Oh, yeah. uh, I always remember Richard James and his voice, his presence. Mm -hmm. uh, if anybody's ever heard his voice, he has yeah. a voice. Mm -hmm. you know, so Richard James was always strong. Uh, his content was always strong. Mm -hmm. Um, E.I.A. Soki, former oh, Tammy yeah. Heard, mm -hmm. uh, another uh, great poet. Uh, one of the three poet laureates that have come out of the Writers' Workshop, including okay. yourself and Claude Lewis, mm -hmm. have been poet laureates of City of Harrisburg, mm -hmm. uh, appointed mm -hmm. by the mayor. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of great voices. Karen Wysoski, oh, I don't know yeah. if you remember Karen. Absolutely. Uh, sure. So many people mm -hmm. throughout the years, 20, wow, 22 years. Uh, that's mm -hmm. a long time. That's 22 long time. years. So many <laughs> voices, though, that have come through. Mm -hmm. Jade Banks. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Jade was one of the early folks that I met when I first came in, and she encouraged mm -hmm. me a lot. She exposed me to some new writers. She really exposed me to spoken word. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I hadn't mm -hmm. really um, been exposed to spoken word. I was writing mm -hmm. poetry about you know nature and all mm -hmm. these th other things, and then <laughs> mm -hmm. you know spoken word came, and it says, okay, you can talk about 
mm -hmm. political things. You can talk about life, real mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be flowery. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. So Jade was important uh, in my growth. Mm -hmm. There's been so many poets uh, throughout the years. I'm so glad you lifted all of them up. And, and my mind was just fresh. And then every time you mentioned the name, I thought about something about that person. So mm -hmm. but I want to go off into that because yeah. I'd be here all day. But uh, we've also had some wonderful visitors uh, come into the workshop, as Pat knows. Pat's the workshop widower because every Friday night <laughs> I'm going out the door, you know, yeah. just about the football widows or past the workshop with. And so um, we've had Kwame Alexander here. Yes. Right? And yes. Kwame's now one of the hottest poets in the country, you know, he doing is. things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kwame's yeah. books are amazing. I have uh, mm -hmm. all of his books in my classroom. Mm -hmm. um, but Kwame also, when I published my book, Splash Patterns on the Glass, he gave me an opportunity. He was having a book fair yeah. in Baltimore, so mm -hmm. I went down. I was able to speak uh, and perform at his book fair in Baltimore. I met Thelma from Good Times. Uh, yes, <laughs> Okay, yes, little you crush when I was a kid. But, uh, yeah, so he's provided great opportunities yeah. for poets, and his writing is just exploding. At well, you know, he also came and did a, a major conference here in Harrisburg. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, were, uh, mm -hmm. thanks to the uh, State Museum of Pennsylvania, uh, we had Thalma from Good Times here, and also uh, mm -hmm. so many other great people. Uh, he, he just he knows how to get it done. He goes to Africa quite a bit, along with Nikki Giovanni and others. Uh, mm -hmm. So one day I hope that uh, you know we could hook up and bring him back up in here. Yeah. Uh, he's doing good stuff. But we also had uh, Omar Tyree come through. Uh, we've had Gwendolyn Brooks uh, before her passing, of course. Uh, Dudley Randall. Uh, and Mary Baraka, Sonia Sanchez. Sonia Sanchez, I gotta mention her, my yeah. mentor, and then uh, Mary Baraka and uh, E. Ethelbert Miller. You know, it just goes on down the line. Great writers, great writers. So, yeah. so that's been uh, a blessing as well. But locally, you mentioned Tammy Hurd, uh, who is now in the EI Asoki, of course, and she's now out in California doing great things. But uh, what a voice she had. She kind of electrified, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and made things happen. Gotta mention Carla Christopher. Uh, mm -hmm. In more recent times, uh, you know, there are those people, Jason has been one, I mean, all the other people I've mentioned, Claude, of course, uh, he, when he first came in, he brought like a, a certain spirit with him and a lot of people. But uh, Carla Christopher in recent years came in and electrified and I thought breathed new life back into the workshop mm -hmm. and also brought us a lot of great uh, writers that mm -hmm. have been, you know, and it's become a lot more multicultural, I would say. Would you agree with that? Definitely. Mm -hmm. I think the workshop's always been a space for any writer, mm -hmm. uh, whatever culture, whatever background you have, mm -hmm. um, it's an open form, it's a welcoming form yeah. for any voice, uh, for any stage of writer also. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Dan Snowden who comes in, who has a doctorate degree, uh, comes in mm -hmm. and shares his poetry mm -hmm. uh, on Friday nights also. Mm -hmm. So yeah. from, we have young people, if we look at our lineup of uh, featured poets coming up on July 6th. We have a young man named Taft, and I'm not going to try and say his last name because I don't want to mess it up. But mm -hmm. the first Friday of every month is our youth night, and we mm -hmm. partner with the PAL, the Harrisburg PAL, mm -hmm. and they bring down a group of kids. So we f we're featuring a young artist. I think Taft is in middle school. He's like so, 12 or 13. Yeah, or so we're yeah. featuring a young poet mm -hmm. on youth night. So the voices in the Writers' Workshop vary, and all voices are welcome. Another thing is, since you mentioned him, his mother, of course, is Wendy, and I must try it, Nolan Cherio. I know I messed it up, but anyway, <laughs> Wendy Nolan Cherio and Taft Nolan Cherio, they uh, do a tremendous job, and uh, she's an excellent uh, spoken word artist. Mm -hmm. And Pat, I know you've heard her before oh, and everything. Yeah. yeah, I've heard her as well. Yes, indeed. And so also coming up is uh, Angela Kirkland, yes. uh, you know, activist poet who does great work, and um, I know you have the... I have uh, all the dates. I do, yeah. and I need my phone because I haven't memorized all no, of them. No, I but can't remember this. Yeah, time. July 6th, we, we have Taft Nolan Cherio, uh, he'll feature. And then on the 13th, we will have Ro Brady. 13th of July? 13th yeah. of July, mm -hmm. Ro Brady. The 27th of July, which is the fourth Friday, will be Angela Kirkland. Fantastic. And mm -hmm. Ro Brady, by the way, is an author. She's written a couple really mm -hmm. good books and also a playwright who just had a wonderful play. Uh, Black Boys and no, oh, do you remember? Uh, forget. But anyhow, mm -hmm. it was a great play that she had up at Hack, and she is working on another project as well. She's one of our storytellers as well too. Mm -hmm. And then of course uh, you mentioned Angela Kirkland coming up at the end of the month, and Angela is an activist, poet, writer, spoken word artist. Pat, give us your impressions of the workshop over the years. I know you've attended a number of the uh, readings and mm -hmm. seen some things, but you know. I have enjoyed the times that I've attended. Uh, more often when I come there may be a special a guest or someone that's mm -hmm. coming in and uh, there's writers that I probably 
enjoy their writings and mm -hmm. wanted to hear and see the kind of thing they were presenting. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason's been one of my favorites mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> in the sense that I've enjoyed his spoken word. Uh, hopefully yeah. he's going to do that one poem that I love, okay, yeah. before we get off the air this morning. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, E.I. Yeah, okay. I always enjoyed her. Mm -hmm. um, I remember good. during that period um, when you both were kind of co-hosting mm -hmm. the word shop and you had some uh, poetry slams. Oh yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. That was yeah. The, uh, yeah. yeah. That's and one good thing about the poetry workshop. A lot yeah. of people branched off and done some amazing things. Yeah. So we'll talk about that mm -hmm. a little bit too. Yeah. So I enjoyed those opportunities and just hearing the different voices in that way. And then some of the more recent ones, mm -hmm. um, like you just said, Wendy, I really enjoyed her and yeah. her works and mm -hmm. how she's come alive and come a part of it. And you did have in um, Love, Newkirk. Oh, oh my goodness, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. they, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. she was here from Germany. Yes, she's been in Germany. I was here in the area for a few weeks, mm -hmm. and uh, I personally had never met her or mm. really heard her okay. mm -hmm. speak. And uh, it was wonderful. It was the storytelling, though. And I'm really enjoying the storytelling. Yeah, storytelling's yeah. been yeah. excellent. Yeah, yeah I we, think that, that's yeah. been real good. I think that's the next frontier for the Writers' Workshop yeah. to really take off, you know. we got to give a special thanks also. Council on the Arts, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, They've been a big yes. supporter, and uh, they will continue to do and. Uh, you know, and, and our board is, is, you know, just mm -hmm. reactivated and, you know, getting back to where we need exactly. to be. And uh, both of you are serving and helping on the board. In fact, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a wild ride. It's been a great ride. We had a wonderful anniversary, too. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, Pat pulled the, off this birthday party for me. But at the same time, we were celebrating mm -hmm. the Writer's Workshop anniversary. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't know is that Pat also secretly had my... Uh, 21st and uh, no, but didn't have my birthday party, <laughs> <laughs> and that was a blast down at the uh, uh, you know Midtown Scholar Bookstore. And thank you to the Midtown Scholar Bookstore, uh, Mayor Pappenfuss and his lovely wife. Uh, they do a tremendous job uh, of not only you know the book publishers as well as uh, distributors, and then they just have one of the best welcoming spaces you can find anywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. For all kinds of groups, they but especially mm -hmm. for you know persons who are interested in literacy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Well, let, me, let me ask you another mm -hmm. question, Jason. You yes. just have finished in your first year mm -hmm. as a full-time teacher. Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Yes. And are you seeing yourself as your English teacher? Correct. Are you seeing yourself really introducing poetry quite a bit to students? How how's that going in with you? Um, I think more so. This year was more of a, a kind of a transition year. So I yeah. served as the building substitute. So I taught the law and public safety program. Okay. Uh, but next year I will transition and I'll be teaching ninth grade English, um, and I've had an opportunity to meet with the team, the uh, mm -hmm. English team there, and I've already infused uh, some different. Um, books for our curriculum in terms mm -hmm. of poetry, uh, Brown Girl Dreaming, oh, yeah. um, yeah. I've added to curriculum, I've added uh, some work by Jason Reynolds, uh, he mm -hmm. wrote a poem called For Everyone, mm -hmm. so really I'm trying to infuse not only um, more poetry, mm -hmm. but different voices. voices right. So I think that if you look at the population of students, it's important that mm -hmm. they see authors that look like them, mm -hmm. that may have shared experiences right. as them. So I'm trying to incorporate mm -hmm. uh, additional voices into the curriculum, not only poet poetically, but yeah. in terms of novels and, and different writers. One, one person we have to lift up is uh, Floyd Stokes, and Floyd has been, you know, big time supportive of this entire community and beyond in terms of literacy mm -hmm. and reading and, and all that for youth. And uh, he's put out a number of uh, really good, you know, youth books, children's books. So uh, what, your, your age range is what, ninth grade? Ninth grade. Ninth grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, um, but just wanted to lift up his name because he's been such an integral part of, you know, so many great things that have happened. But his one big thing, of course, is uh, that of reading and literacy. And um, so, and, and I think they go hand in hand. Definitely. You know, yeah. I think um, it's funny, early on, uh, when I was exposed to poetry, it was the classics, it was the Keats, the Shelleys. That's what I was exposed to in mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. um, and once I started coming to the Writer's Workshop, I kind of stopped reading. Mm -hmm. um, not because I didn't see the value of right. it, but mm -hmm. because I was in the process of finding my own voice. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want it to be influenced mm -hmm. by other voices. Mm -hmm. I wanted to really find my own voice. Sure. But mm -hmm. after I was comfortable with who I was and who, what my voice was, mm -hmm. it's important to read other writers because I think that's how you improve. So you yeah. can pick up nuances that's and right. see how mm -hmm. other writers write, how they use the language, mm -hmm. and how you might be able to incorporate that into your own writing. You know, I listened to, uh, we have Diana Diaz who's been attending, and she's one of our uh, longest coming members as well as, uh, you know, she's uh, up in age, mm -hmm. and uh, her husband is Jim McConkie. 
and Jim has a tremendous voice. He wrote a book about his experience, his memoir, uh, when he was in uh, India. And I just love to hear, you know, the craft that he has. Uh, but Diana Diaz, not only is she a fantastic poet, as far as I'm concerned, she also was really a, a, a matron of the arts. Uh, she uh, literally yeah. created the Paul Robeson Center. She brought in, she introduced me to E. Ethelbert Miller, and if you've never heard him read before, wow, you know, he's mm -hmm. just a master. Yeah. And then, of course, um, so many other greats came in. Uh, Oliver Legrone was here at one time. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to mention. But let me give you another name from the past. I don't know if you remember Miriam Kessler. I do. Yes, oh, my indeed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And Miriam yeah. Kessler. Someone to pour the wine. Yeah, did you go? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone, All right. to pour <laughs> Someone to pour the wine. Yeah. And Miriam is a Jewish writer who uh, was up of, of age at the time, and she uh, just celebrated herself. And she embodied, I thought, what the workshop was all about. She brought her culture in, her own voice, you know, the whole bit. Mm -hmm. So the diversity, the appreciation. Um, Sonia Sanchez said a long time ago, don't allow your workshop or workshop to deteriorate to a form where people start arguing about, you know, why did you write that or this? No, right. we come and we appreciate all writing. Right. The, the thing is to capture the essence of whatever you're trying to say. You know, mm -hmm. capture that essence so that we can appreciate it, you know, and keep on going. So yeah. what do we have on the board? I know we have a lot of things that we've talked about uh, in terms of, you know, directions you may want to go. So I think, mm -hmm. um, you know, as the, the quote I started off with, where the exploration and you learn as you go, mm -hmm. even though the Writers' Workshop's been around for 40 years, yeah, 41 years. Uh, mm -hmm. we're still growing. Mm -hmm. We're still learning right, yeah. um, how we can expand and make uh, the offering more valuable to the community. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have the schedule of Friday nights. The first Friday is youth night. Mm -hmm. Second the second Friday is open reading or mm -hmm. and a feature reader. The fourth Friday is open reading and a feature. Mm -hmm. We've expanded now. The third Friday mm -hmm. incorporates the storytelling piece, yeah. which we moved to a different venue, mm -hmm. which is your church off of Derry Street, mm -hmm. 15th and Derry. Mm -hmm. So we're still growing and expanding, but we want to also look at how we can maximize uh, what resources are out there so that yeah. we can bring additional programming to the community. So we Absolutely. met with yeah. Dana from Pennsylvania Council on Arts on Tuesday yeah. this mm -hmm. week mm -hmm. um, to talk with her about some possible grants and what we can do uh, to bring some additional funding so we can increase the value and the opportunities that we bring to mm -hmm. the community. Mm -hmm. Also want to mention partnerships. So we have a current partnership with the Pennsylvania State Museum where we do programs there throughout mm -hmm the year. Mm -hmm. uh, on one of your other programs, you interviewed, I can't recall their names, Gingrich and someone where they talked about someone to tell it to. Yes. Oh, yeah. And I think their mission is, is, is similar to the word shop. So those mm -hmm. people that come into the space of the writer's workshop mm -hmm. have something to say yeah, yeah. and they want someone to listen mm -hmm. to what they have to say. So potentially a That's partnership good. there. Mm -hmm. So looking at how we can expand more in the community and maybe it's in, in addition to Friday nights, what else can we bring to mm -hmm. the greater community? That's great. That's great. Yeah, I, like I do. That. Yeah, me too. You know, I do know that uh, one of the things we hope to do more of is theater. At one point, we used to do little plays. You know, we kind of moved away from that. We want to get back to that. Uh, my brother actually um, directed the last one that we, you know, kind of mm -hmm. put together, and it was at the State Museum, and we really had a, a good turnout and a good, you know, production. But we just mm -hmm. had to get back to it. That uh, frontier I hope that we will look at is better use of uh, the modern technologies. You know, and interfacing. I like to see us do some live feeds with the other writers groups from Chicago, Philadelphia, you know, Oakland, California, yeah. stuff like that. Because that stuff's very doable. So that's mm -hmm. hopefully, you know, down the line we can make that happen. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to see happen is we put out a nice anthology, thanks to Community Arts Inc. We have some really w good working relationships. Mm -hmm. um, Community Arts Inc. is our publishing arm. You know, we still, you know, use them. And then we have Janita Jackson, got a lift her up. She does all our flyers for us and PR stuff. And, uh, you know, it goes on down the line. And we have both radio, a uh, radio TV kind of thing, too, that we can uh, utilize more through uh, the voice, 17104.com. So, you know, there's a lot to be, you know, on the, on the plate here. And the one thing that we hope that will always happen is that people get published. You know, right. so if someone is, wants to be a poet, published poet, um, just come on out and, and get involved, man. You know, I have people call me and they, was, and they want to do all this stuff, but they never come. Mm. You know, one guy told me he was the best poet in the world and the best rapper. <laughs> so I said, what are you talking about? 
<laughs> it's like, well, come on down and show us, you know. But just being the lone wolf doesn't get it for me. I want to see people get involved. And we're not the only game in town. There's almost right. a town poetry cartel. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell people in a minute, hey, man, you may want to go check them out. They are fantastic right. on a Thursday night, you know, mm -hmm. because it's all about the writing, not about just building ourselves up. Would you agree? I definitely agree. Mm -hmm. uh, almost Uptown Poetry Cartel has been around for a number of years, too. Marty mm -hmm. Esworthy Marty heads Esworth. that Marty. up, and they meet on Thursday nights in the same space that we meet in That's at right. the uh, Midtown Scholar. So mm -hmm. I think that there's a space for everyone mm -hmm. um, and not a singular space for yeah. uh, for poetry to be shared or your words to be shared or your writing to be shared. Yeah, and I will say that we do meet on Friday nights uh, from 7 to 9. Mm -hmm. It is free, by the way. It is free. It's mm -hmm. always been free. And so, uh, and there's no form of fashion. Just come out. You can either come out and just listen or come out and read. It, it's all up to you. Is that right? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, right. Yeah. One of the other things I want to mention, we talked about, um, it's called Writer's Word Shop. Mm -hmm. um, but on the fifth Fridays, so those months that have a fifth Friday now, we've talked about we're actually going to do kind of a workshop piece for the beginning yeah. part to explore different poetic forms. Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. So to add a little bit more education mm -hmm. piece into to oh, okay. uh, what we do also, and we'll offer that throughout the year whenever there's a fifth Friday. Yeah, yeah, and I'm okay. glad you mentioned that because I, we were talking, oh, we didn't mention Julia Mallory. Yes. Come on, how are we going to mention <laughs> Julia? And she's been a wonderful writer and, and, and member of the workshop for years. And uh, she has a couple books out, Black Mermaids, mm -hmm. I think, and, and uh, she's really taken that. And, and she has a new book coming out right now as we speak. Mm -hmm. uh, and I uh, understand the cover's going to be unveiled. Someone's, you know, she had it on <laughs> Facebook mm -hmm. and everything. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, we just have to mention her and all the great work she's doing. But, yeah, she had just mentioned to me about doing some workshop things, you know, uh, you know the forms of poetry. Sometimes we forget everybody's writing free verse or doing spoken word, but there are, are actual forms of poetry. And, um, you know, so, yeah, we can bless somebody by making sure that that happens, mm -hmm. right? right? Jay Banks, by the way, did one of our best, uh, you know, publishing workshops ever. And Jade is a wonderful writer who lives in the city now, but she had lived in Harlem for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then the third, the other person I want to mention is Maria Chow. Oh, yeah. You cannot right. forget Maria Chow. Right. You mentioned Mary, uh, Richard James. That's yes. Richard James' daughter. Yeah. And she's a professor at Central Penn College and a great author and also a great teacher. You know, so mm -hmm. we've got to get her involved. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there have been a wonderful number of people throughout the years that I have seen come through the workshop and um, mm -hmm. then going on on their own mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. and have been very successful and moved forward and done some additional things as well. Basil but Talib, remember yeah. Basil Talib? Yeah. He's doing great mm -hmm. stuff, uh -huh. you know, great voice. Yeah, and so we, we yeah, I know that. I'm missing people, so forget y'all forgive me, but Bonnie Green, I keep on going. <laughs> we just go down the line. Know, you so know. many yeah, that so. have been a part of mm -hmm. After 41 years, though, I mean, you yeah. just... Betty so Curtis. Yeah, you mm -hmm. just... Mm -hmm. As you said, you keep thinking, thinking yeah. more and more folks, names that come about mm -hmm. and all. But so glad to have you yeah, yeah, on definitely. regard to the role as president and to keep this alive and well mm -hmm. and going. Yeah. And, you know, I know we've run out of time here, but uh, if people wanted to reach the Writers' Workshop, is there a particular way? Should I just start out here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Email. Because you can always email. Just simply go to P. Gadsden, that's G-A-D-S-D-E-N, at com. Or you can always contact me at area code 717-608-2312. That's 717-608-2312. Hey, come out and find us on a Friday night at the Midtown Scholar Bookstore, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's all free. Jason Moffat and I will be there as much as we can. Have yourself a blessed day. See you next time. Goodbye.